Street battles in Mariupol rage on as soldiers scurry across this urban battlefield. Up to 170,000 people in hiding, waiting to be rescued. We send 45 buses along the route to Mariupol. 28 buses have to get permission now to go through Russian checkpoints. Russia has reduced Mariupol to ruins, including a Red Cross warehouse, but has promised to allow the humanitarian convoy into the besieged city. Nearly 5,000 people have already been killed here. Russian President Vladimir Putin has also agreed to scale back attacks elsewhere. What does it mean significantly scaling down combat actions in Kyiv and Cherniv? Does it mean there will be 100 rockets instead of 200 rockets launched or something else? Ukraine's Western allies believe there is growing desperation in the Kremlin and that Russia's president may be using negotiations to regroup militarily. Also in the Donbass, in Mariupol, in the Kharkiv direction, the Russian troops are accumulating the potential for strikes, powerful strikes. We will defend ourselves. Vladimir Putin is now demanding all payments for his country's natural gas be made in rubles and has threatened to cut off supplies to Europe. Moscow also wants Ukraine to cede territory in its eastern Donbass region to Russian-backed separatists. This war is now in its fifth week. The death toll is only rising. Towns are being flattened. The question on many minds in this weary nation is just how much will they have to concede to see peace in their country. Unfortunately, it's hard to imagine how to stop this war without compromise, but it depends which kind of compromises. This region in western Ukraine was the only one not to back President Volodymyr Zelensky at the last election. Before the war started, that maybe he's not good enough or something, but after it happened, he took a position to stay with the nation, which means uh, for us that, you know, he's part of us. Now many here believe he has the answers to bring this war to an end. Isabella Higgins, ABC News, Lviv.